This is lesson 19 in our Calculus 3 series, Absolute Extrema. Let's start this lesson by recalling what we know about absolute extrema from Calc 1. For y is a function of x, f has a global or absolute maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain. Now this is the difference between relative extrema and absolute extrema. Here we're saying that this is true for all x in the domain. And we say f of c is the maximum value of f on d. Similarly, f has a global or absolute minimum at x equals c if f of c is less or equal to f of x for all x in the domain. And f of c is the minimum value of f on d. And we have the extreme value theorem that tells us if f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then f attains an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on that interval. And the absolute extrema can occur either at critical points within the interval or at the endpoints of the interval, meaning at a or b. Now let's take a look at what we have for functions of two variables. For z is a function of x and y, f has a global or absolute maximum at a, b if f of a, b is greater than or equal to f of x, y for all x, y in the domain d of f. And we call f of a, b the maximum value of f on d. Similarly, f has a global or absolute minimum at a, b if f of a, b is less or equal to f of x, y for all x, y in the domain d of f, and f of a, b is the minimum value of f on d. And we have an extreme value theorem here as well. If f is continuous on a closed bounded set d in R2, then f attains absolute minimum and absolute maximum values on d. Now to find absolute extrema of a continuous function f on a closed bounded set d in R2, we want to find the values of f at the critical points of f that are in d, find the extreme values of f on the boundary, and then the largest value that we find from steps 1 and 2 is the absolute maximum value of f on d, and the smallest value is the absolute minimum value of f on d. So this is very similar to what we had with functions of one variable. We said with functions of one variable that the absolute extrema could occur at critical points within the interval or at endpoints of the interval. Now that our domain is a subset of two-dimensional space, we don't just have an interval, we have a closed bounded set in R2. And so we need to look at the critical points within the domain and also the extreme values that f takes on the boundary of the domain. So let's take a look at an example. Find the absolute extrema of f of xy equals xy squared on the unit disk. So they're telling us here that the domain is the unit disk. That's the closed bounded region in R2 whose boundary is the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. So in other words, this unit disk is the set x squared plus y squared is less or equal to 1. That's our domain. That's our unit disk. And step one is to find critical points of f inside the domain. So to find critical points, we're going to take a look at our x and y partials and set them equal to 0. Our x partial here is just y squared. And our y partial here is 2xy. So setting these two equal to 0, we see that the x partial is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0. But if y is equal to 0, then the y partial is always going to be 0. So x can be anything. So we have a whole line segment of critical points here where x can be anything from negative 1 to 1 as long as y equals 0. So we've got a whole line segment of critical points there. It's a line segment from negative 1, 0 to 1, 0, including both endpoints. Now we have to find the value of f at these points. Now our function f is xy squared but the y value for all of these points is 0, and so this is just 0. So along all of these critical points, the function value is 0. Now we want to check what's happening on the boundary. We want to look for any extreme values on the boundary. So the boundary is the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So we want to look at values for f 
at any of the boundary points. So we want to get our function f in terms of just one variable by using the equation along the boundary. So here I'm going to solve for y squared. y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared, and I'm going to plug that in here. So along the boundary, f reduces to a function of one variable. And what we're looking for is a maximum or minimum value of this function for x values that go from negative 1 to 1, as they do for our boundary curve. So this is a calc 1 absolute extrema problem. So I'm going to just call that g of x, since f was a function of two variables, I'll just call this g. g of x is x times 1 minus x squared, so that's x minus x to the third. So how do we find the absolute extrema here? Well, we take the derivative, set it equal to 0 to find our critical points. That gives us 1 minus 3x squared is equal to 0, or x is equal to positive negative radical 1 third. And we want to take a look at the values for g at these critical points and also at the end points of our interval. Remember we said that g of x is a function for x values from negative 1 to 1. So we want to put the endpoints on this table as well. And we find that the maximum value occurs at x equal positive radical 1 third. And we get a maximum of 2 radical 3 over 9. And our minimum occurs at x equals negative radical 1 third. And that has a minimum function value of negative 2 radical 3 over 9. So along our boundary, these are the maximum and minimum values. And we found that among the critical points inside the domain, we had function value of 0. So now we're looking at the function value of 0 versus the function values of positive and negative 2 radical 3 over 9. And that's how we determine our maximum and minimum values on this entire domain. So the maximum of boundary or critical points is 2 radical 3 over 9, and that happens when x is equal to positive radical 1 third. But what are the corresponding y values there? We said y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. So in this case, y could be positive or negative radical 2 thirds. Similarly, the minimum from the boundary or critical points comes from a boundary, and that's negative 2 radical 3 over 9. And that occurs at x equals negative radical 1 third, and its corresponding y value is positive or negative radical 2 thirds. So what does that look like? Here's our surface defined only over the disk, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And we can see that we have our two maximum values here and here, our two minimum values here and here. Let's take a look at another example. Find the absolute extrema of f of x, y equals x squared plus 2y squared minus x squared y over the triangular region bounded by 0, 0, 10, 0, and 0, 10. So just for a second, I'm going to scroll down here to sketch out our domain. All right here's our triangular region bounded by 0, 0, 0, 10, and 10, 0. Okay, that's the domain over which we're going to graph this surface. And we want to find absolute extrema over that domain. So again, we want to look at our critical points. We're going to take our partial derivatives and set them equal to 0. In this case and in the last problem, our partial derivatives always exist. So our critical points are only coming from the situation where both partials are equal to 0 at the same time. So our x partial here is going to be 2x minus 2xy. And our y partial is going to be 4y minus x squared. And so we want to set these both equal to 0 at the same time. And we want to use substitution to solve for one variable and sub into the other equation. So there's different ways you could do this, but I thought it was easiest to solve for y here. y equals x squared over 4 and plug into the first equation here. So simplifying, we're here, 
and multiplying everything by 2 to get rid of fractions, we get 4x minus x to the third is equal to 0. And we want to solve for x. So factoring out an x, we get x times 4 minus x squared is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0, or x is equal to plus or minus 2. When x equals 0, what's the corresponding y value? Well, y is equal to x squared over 4. So y is also equal to 0 here. So our critical point is 0, 0. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 squared over 4 and that's equal to 1, so we have the point 2, 1. And we notice that when x is equal to negative 2, we get negative 2, 1, but wait a minute, x equals negative 2 is not in the domain. There's no point where x is equal to negative 2 in our domain, so we're not going to consider that point at all. So we have two critical points in the domain at which we want to find the function values. So we need f of 0, 0, and f of 2, 1 f of 0, 0 is just 0, and f of 2, 1 is going to be 2. So, so far we know that we have a value of 0 at 0, 0, and a value of 2 at 2, 1, and those are the only critical points we have in the domain. So now we have to find out what the extreme values are along the boundary of this domain. So I've taken our triangle and I've divided it up into three lines, or line segments, and so let's take a look at L1 first. L1 is the line segment along x equals 0, and in this case y goes from 0 to 10. So x is equal to 0, y goes from 0 to 10. And here's our function f of x, y, but if x is equal to 0, this reduces just to 2y squared for y going from 0 to 10. So where is there a minimum here and where is there a maximum? Well, there's going to be a minimum when y is equal to 0 and that function value is 0. There's going to be a maximum when y is equal to 10 and that function value is 200. So those are the extreme values along line segment 1. Let's take a look at line segment 2. This is the line y equals 0 where x goes from 0 to 10. If y equals 0, our function reduces to x squared. If y is equal to 0, our function reduces to x squared, and we're looking at x going from 0 to 10. So again, we have a minimum at 0, 0. The function value is 0. And we're going to have our maximum at x equals 10, and that function value is going to be 100. Okay, so now let's take a look at line segment 3 and look at any extreme values there. Line segment 3 is part of the line that, that goes through the points 0, 10 and 10, 0. So notice this line has slope negative 1 and intercept 10, so this is the line y equals negative x plus 10. And again, that has x values going from 0 to 10. So here's our function. And if y is equal to negative x plus 10, we can substitute in and get this function in terms of just one variable. It's a little bit of a more complicated situation than we had with line segments 1 and 2. So I'm going to call this g of x, and this is a calc 1 problem, absolute extrema. So we've got g prime is equal to 3x squared minus 14x minus 40. And we set that equal to 0 and solve for x. So here we find that x is equal to 20 thirds, or x is equal to negative 2. Now again, x equals negative 2, not in our domain. So we're just going to look at x equals 20 thirds. When x is equal to 20 thirds, what's y going to be? Remember this is a line y equals negative x plus 10, or y equals 10 minus x. So y is going to be 10 thirds. And so our function value is going to be negative 2200 over 27, which is approximately negative 81.5. So now what have we found so far? We're on line segment 3, and we're trying to find absolute extrema of this function along this interval. All we found so far is this critical point and its function value. So we also need to look at the endpoints of this line segment. That's 0, 10, and 10, 0, 
we've actually already considered these values on the other line segments. So we have in fact checked our entire boundary for any maximum or minimum values. And what did we find? So we found that the absolute maximum of F on this domain is 200, that's the maximum value, and it occurs at the point 0, 010. We found that the absolute minimum value of F on this domain is negative 2200 over 27, and that occurs at 20 thirds comma 10 thirds. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So here's our surface, but I wasn't able to get just the domain that we were looking for plotted. So keep in mind that the domain that we're looking for is just this triangle here. So our surface ends along this blue curve. So where are the maximum and minimum values that we found? We said we have a value of 200, a function value of 200 at the point 0, 10. That's x equals 0, y equals 10, z is equal to 200. And when x is equal to 20 thirds, y is equal to 10 thirds, our minimum value is here. So that looks like this. And this concludes our lesson on absolute extrema.